and we are live. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful day. It's Friday, May 27th, 2022. And this week, we're talking all about HomePod rumors, uh, iPhone rumors, because there's always different rumors going around. We're leading up to WWDC, and perhaps a little later in the show, we might talk to an iOS app developer, the developer of the very popular uh, Reddit app, Apollo. But for now, I am your host, Luke Filipovich, and I am joined, as always, by my two lovely co-hosts, Karen Freeman. I'm more contributor. How you doing, Karen? Hello, I'm doing well. How about you? Not too bad. Excited to be here and joined by Stephen Warwick, our news editor at iMore. How are you doing, Stephen? Good morning. I'm well, thank you. Uh, yeah, so last week <laughs> we had another to-be-continued moment. Right at the end of the show, there was a rumor that... Another popped... appendage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> another appendage, <laughs> as Stephen <laughs> so eloquently put it. Um, but there's a new... There's a rumor that potentially a new HomePod is going to be coming later this year or maybe early next year. Stephen, what are we hearing about that? Yeah, so this is from uh, Woming Chi, very reliable insider, as, as always, who, who tweeted right at the end of our show last week that um, there's a new version of Apple's HomePod coming out possibly in so either the fourth quarter of 2022, so December and the two months prior, which I've forgotten, October and November, one of those three, Um and then, or the Q1 of 2023, so so possibly in the spring. Apple doesn't really release stuff in like December, January, February. So this seems like a kind of a late fall or spring uh, kind of window. But yeah, Apple apparently is going to release a new version of the HomePod. Um, Quote says that there won't be much innovation. There may not be much innovation in terms of hardware design. Um and goes on to say that smart speakers are undoubtedly one of the essential elements of the home ecosystem. But he thinks Apple is still figuring out how to succeed in this market, which I think is very true. The old, the, certainly the very first home part of the big one, um, did not do that well by all accounts. I think it was misunderstood by a lot of people um, who, yeah, just it. Just, sat in like a really funny place in the market the home pod mini i absolutely love um i think it's a, a bit of a triumph but it sounds like we might be getting a new home pod of sorts he doesn't say anything about what kind of home pod this is so we don't know if it's a big one another small one a medium sized one um yeah so <laughs> we can talk about anything we like because uh, it's a nice open-ended rumor which uh yeah, I, I put it out on our social media and got some responses from our readers. Um, the popular responses were uh, hopefully a screen. Mm. Um, uh, w one reader wanted like a like a sound bar kind of thing. And um, mm. and someone else said just better sound quality. That's interesting. Yeah, the 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 screen is an interesting one because we've heard lots of rumors and rumblings that Apple is at least testing some sort of eye pad home pod kind of hybrid so yeah like a home pod with some obviously the, the home pod currently has a, a pretty limited sort of touch interface on the top with the volume and it basically like a start stop kind of button um but we yeah we've heard that it might be you know more like a home pod with an ipad almost integrated into the home pod so possibly running ipad os with different apps um, and usable for video calls or surf the internet or you know better smart home control than you can get just by talking to Siri, which is what the, the HomePod currently offers. I, I think my... I I love the big HomePod. I'm, like, we have two. We use it in our, um, like our home kind of theater system uh, for entertainment and think it is absolutely fantastic, especially with um, the new Apple TV, which has the eARC audio. So we can take an audio source from whatever it is we're watching, not just the Apple TV, and pipe that to the HomePod. Um, mm -hmm. It's really tremendous. So I'm a new home pod is very exciting and i guess it's sort of more exciting that we've no idea what what this could be i don't think it'll be like a, a an update to the home pod mini i mean it, it might be but it seems more likely to be a, a different form factor and because mm. uh whoa says there won't be much innovation in the hardware design yeah it might be like a very slightly tweaked slightly bigger slightly smaller or you know, uh, back to the old HomePod with a, a sort of a, an audio upgrade or, or things like that. So, yeah, very, very exciting, very interesting, but certainly quite an, a nebulous rumor at this stage. Yeah, I'm curious that like there's there's no I mean, I, I obviously it could just be maybe quo sources that don't know or or perhaps um, it's just the way that's going to be. But it, it'd be weird. It, it'd be a little weird to me if they just kind of relaunched the original HomePod with like a few minor updates. 
because right. yeah. I, the original like HomePod be... didn't do very well. Yeah, right? it doesn't make any sense. Right. And so I, you would... I feel like it's got to be kind of a ground up overhaul. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say completely ground up, but you think it's got to have like some new, like something new about it to attract people. And perhaps, honestly, I, I don't know how this would be possible because we know Apple, but uh like a little bit of a cheaper price would probably go a long way too, because yeah. it was, it was fairly expensive for what it was, yeah. uh, especially like, like home, home pod medium sort of. So the, the home pod mini medium. <laughs> is great. Like, yeah. You've got the home pod mini max and then yeah, just the regular home pod in the, in the middle. I, the, the, the home pod mini is fantastic. It packs like so much punch, mm -hmm. but for a speaker, the size of like a baseball, it like $99, is a lot so but i think there's probably a market for slightly bigger and slightly more expensive so cheaper than the old original home pod which was what 329 yeah or 49 dollars yeah i think it was three i think it was 350 when i came out it, and I'd then it, it was that, but... they, they put it down to 279 mm -hmm. and even then people were buying home pods and they were still getting serial numbers from the original like release run from when the HomePod was first made and came off the production line in I guess, mm -hmm. 2018, I think it was. And, and they, they were like full of dust and stuff because they'd just been sat in warehouses or, or factories or wherever it was for, for however long. So I think up from the Mini, because the Mini is good, but in terms of sound quality, there's plenty of headroom. Yeah, yeah totally. I, I, I like the idea of adding a screen to it, and and I don't think it would necessarily be like an iPad or use iPad OS. I, I'm thinking of something totally different. Like I think of how I use my HomePod Mini, which is 99% of the time I'm using it either to ask the weather or to add something to my shopping list. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thinking like of a smart screen that's integrated in directly into the device. So if I say, "Hey, you know, you know who?" add uh, eggs to my shopping list and then it would suddenly the screen would show up where I would see it being added to my list or if I would say hey you know you know who what's the weather today um, then like an actual screen uh, weather report would show up on the screen yeah and the default could be something like um, it just could the be now like playing a montage from, of photographs from music or, or, or now like playing yeah. yeah or it just like it would change to whatever you were doing mm -hmm. like if you're listening to music it would be the album cover art mm -hmm. If you're um, if you're not doing anything, it could just be like a montage of photos from your photo library, or it could be uh, like like ongoing like time and weather kind of thing. Like people have little devices that have screens like that. So yeah. I don't know. It could, there's a lot of potential there. Yeah. yeah. So the, go on, look. I was just going to say that the there is room in the market, and I think, but I think it's above the HomePod Mini. I don't think we're going to get anything cheaper. Certainly not smaller. So not cheaper than the HomePod Mini, unless there's like a HomePod Mini 2, like a refresh, mm. like, you know, Karen, you, you read a set about, you know, updated uh, sound quality. Um, I would love to see Apple keep doing more with the, the biggest thing for me is, is the communication between HomePods. I literally yesterday was listening to a, a like a, just a, a playlist in, in the kitchen and I just wanted to walk into the office and keep listening to that in on a different HomePod. But when I said the magic, by the way, Karen didn't like forget what series name was. She said, hey, you know who? So that all of our <laughs> devices don't start barking on the podcast. Yeah. So yeah. you say the magic words <laughs> and continue this in, in the office. And Siri just sort of, you know, like like freaked out and, and died a bit of a death. And, and so there's still for me some real like reliability and integration stuff that I would love to see fixed. So if, if we can have like a refreshed HomePod mini, that would you know give me a little bit of um even the handoff feature i find is uh, a little sometimes it works really well but other times i'll be in bed like on my phone and the home pod mini is on the nightstand probably like a, a yard away mm -hmm. and my phone will start like vibrating in my hand because it, it thinks it can sense the home pod close by and I'm, I'm not even you know i'm not even close so <laughs> maybe room for a home pod mini too but i think the the room in the home pod market is up and above the mini both in terms of price and form factor sound features that sort of yeah. thing sound bar still also like, really interesting like, like under 250 though like there, there's a yeah. lot of space in between 100 and 350 you know yeah, yeah. i think Hopefully yeah in I th between yeah i definitely agree that like it's above the home pod mini and i actually i actually i i also have a i, I only have one because i have a small apartment i don't need much more than one but i have one that and that's my main like YouTube device, also my main cooking timer. <laughs> this is what I set all my cooking timers on when I'm making dinner. But like, um, 
it's my main like like it's kind of replaced my at home i used to use like bluetooth speakers at home right when i was like listening to music cleaning the house or whatever but it's like completely replaced that like it sits in the living room but if i turn it up i can hear my jams throughout my entire living you know i have a small apartment so it's not that big of a deal but like i feel like you know for i feel like for the price i think the home prod mini is like in a decent spot like it could be mm. maybe like you know 10 to 20 cheaper and then it would be even better but like i think it's kind of like it kind of hits the a nice a nice spot it's not like a an, a crazy investment but you're still getting like like i was surprised that like i get there's definitely room for the sound quality to be better and there are you know plenty of speakers that do better uh better sound quality but for like the the for how small it is the amount it can put out and like the bass quality on small speakers is usually yeah. like that's the that's the thing that usually separate small speakers from bigger speakers is like you just even with really good sound quality you just can't get the like the woofers that you need to really kind of give you that that boom and bass and like the, it's not like the home pod mini is gonna or gonna blow you away with bass but it's like very good for the size of a speaker it's like very solid bass performance so mm. i really like the the home pod mini i like i could be swayed to getting a bigger home pod and then perhaps using it with my apple tv as a speaker and things like that um but it can't be you know yeah, it can't be north of like three hundred dollars, um, especially when you need two to fully. Certainly with an yeah, Apple TV, right, ex- you need exactly. the stereo. That's what we have, and it's you know we got a very fortunate that we, I met my wife at Apple, so we we both used to work there. So the first HomePod we had was my wife's one, bought an employee mm-hmm. discount, and the second one was through a friend who, who used to work at the store. So we did not pay full price, and that was discount on the discounted two seven nine price. So we did not pay full price for either of our HomePods, and we wouldn't like yeah, you're talking. Seven hundred dollars for a two-speaker audio system, um, mm. yeah. So it, it is. Um, I had a really, really um, important point to make, and it has completely escaped me in the time I told that anecdote. So uh, <laughs> go on back round, and I will see if I remember what it was. It was about the HomePod. That's what it was. The HomePod Mini. My my biggest draw with the HomePod Mini is you need two to fully recognize the sound potential because once you get them in stereo they sound incredible you could even mm-hmm. use that for watching movies on uh, like a macbook or an imac or even an ipad and it sounds brilliant but it always just you know when it's just the one it always felt a little bit limited so i would probably rather pay 150 dollars for a slightly bigger speaker that mm-hmm. i don't have to buy two to use to get the the full potential out of it, that was the only thing for the, the kind of the biggest gripe for me that I thought held the HomePod mini so, back. So are are you saying you you would prefer like a sound bar style? Yeah, not not just in terms of the the form factor, but I. So what what happened f- for me was I got two HomePods. I I, w- I did the review for iMore and got two HomePods and I used them in stereo for for a good while. And when you sit between the two of those, kind of the right distance, the right place, they sound brilliant. And once I'd sort of done away with my review setup, gave one to my wife through in the kitchen, and now I only have one. I'm like, oh, like I just I miss the I miss the other HomePod. So. Not necessarily in terms of the form factor for for videos and stuff like that, but just something a bit bigger so that I was like, this speaker can do it all by itself. Whereas for me, the HomePod Mini always works best in that in that two that two pair and kind of kind of setup and combination. So yeah, we'll see what we'll see what happens. But a sound bar is also a really interesting one. Um, yeah, that's Stone that's what had I... a lot of success with their the Ray and, and the Arc and stuff. That's what I would be more, more, most excited for. And I understand that like, if it's actually a full on soundbar as well as a home pod, then it would probably actually put the, put, push the price up and, you know, like 300 mm. to $400 for a very decent soundbar is not a bad deal. Um, yeah. if you're using it and, but that's the one that I always thought would be really, really interesting is like a soundbar home pod kind of, kind of mix. Um, well, because lots of sound, the, the most recent, I think it's the Ray that came mm. out from Sonos. Is the yeah. Ray? Yeah, it's not not the arc. It's the right that has AirPlay, and mm. it has like Sonos's kind of Siri equivalent, and it's a soundbar. So there's obviously a market for people who want that sort of kind of price point and, and functionality. So, and yeah. it's three forty nine. Yes, so it's, yes, it's about what the original HomePod and, was originally. And because it's a a soundbar yeah. with that yeah. that elongated form factor, you only have to buy one, which again was a, a criticism i have of, of the big home pod as well yeah and then also like if it's just a sound bar as well as a home pod you don't have to like have an apple tv to use it with your regular tv just plug it into your tv and then boom you have great sound and, exactly. and kind of the advantage of a sound bar um yeah and i love sound bars and just in general like i think like 
Uh, most TV speakers these days are pretty bad. Like they're meant, they're, they're not really meant to be great. Most TV speakers are meant to be hooked up to, uh, um, to some sort of external sound system and, and kind of the best and cheapest way to kind of get like a decent sound out of your TV is to pick up a, a an okay sound bar. So I think like it's, it's not a bad, it's really not a bad call. I think if Apple went that way, unfortunately it seems it as, as this rumor stands, it doesn't seem like that's what's going to be coming down the pipeline. Um, but uh, who knows? I also liked the idea. I think there was a rumor. This might have just been been a concept at one point that we covered, but uh, the idea of like a HomePod slash Apple TV hybrid, because why do you Ooh, why yeah. do you really why do you really need an, an Apple TV box if you just need a, you know, like especially since HomePod already runs kind of a modified version of TVOS anyways, like that's what it's it's it actually runs on. Um uh, and you update through your iPhone or whatever, but it, I, I feel like it probably wouldn't, it definitely wouldn't be impossible to somehow mix the two. I don't know exactly what that would look like, but I think that might be an interesting proposition. But also give the the Apple TV a decent update. It hasn't really had a had a full on update. I mean, it got it got its like little 4K bump that it got like a year ago or whatever, um, which it was 4K before, but it had a slightly slightly um bigger bigger storage and things like that yeah, but it was new process and stuff yeah the new siri remote which was mm. needed um oh, yeah. Uh, uh but yeah i it would i feel like it would breathe new life into into like two of their lines almost a little bit so um it would be interesting that'd be an interesting proposition too i would i would probably like look at that because i i i keep waffling back and forth i still have the old like 1080p uh apple tv uh so like the apple tv 4 i believe the fourth yeah. generation um and I just like, even though I have a 4K TV and everything, it's just like, I can't really bring myself to buy the 4K one because it's like, other than 4K, it's not really giving me much <laughs> else. And so it's like, I get that 4K is nice, but like, it's not like 1080p looks horrible or anything. It's not like I can't watch a, you know, watch a movie when I need to. And, um, you know, my Netflix and stuff is all hooked up through, through my TV anyway. So I watch that in 4K regardless. So it, it I would kind of breathe new life. I feel like if, if the... Apple TV, you know, comes in to to its own and kind of surprises me or like gives us something something really exciting if, if it comes out with a new model, something like this would actually probably maybe push me to finally upgrade mine. Um, and I'm sure that there are a few people out there too who probably just have been sitting on their 1080p's for a while just because like other than 4K, what does the new one really get you? Not really that much, a bit more storage. Yeah. Um, but before we continue, uh, we're going to move on to a sponsor of ours, and Stephen's going to tell us all about it. Thank you, Luke. Uh, yeah, today's I'm All Show is brought to you by Alto. Do you have an account with Coinbase, or are you thinking of opening one? Do you own any Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, or any other cryptocurrency? Cryptocurrency might represent the future of money. It's one of the most exciting investment opportunities to come around for some time. But what about taxes? With an Alto crypto IRA, you can trade Bitcoin, and other cryptocurrencies and avoid or defer the taxes. Get into investing in crypto and do it in a tax advantage retirement account. Alto's crypto IRA is the easy way to get crypto into an IRA. You can trade all you want without a tax headache, create an account in just a few minutes and invest with as little as $10. It also has industry leading security and multiple ways to fund your account. Ready to take your investments to the next level? Diversify like the pros and trade without tax headaches. Open an Alto Crypto IRA with as little as just $10. Just go to altoira.com forward slash imore. That's A-L-T-O-I-R-A dot com forward slash imore. Start investing in cryptocurrency today. Go to altoira.com forward slash imore. Awesome. Thank you, Stephen. And thank you, Alto, for sponsoring the imore show. Um, moving on from the HomePod, another uh, rumor coming from Quo. Uh, that the AirPods Pro 2 are to entering mass production. Um, apparently, they don't have USB-C, though. Is that what we're hearing, Steve? Yeah, I think this is kind of expected. We heard, obviously, a couple of weeks ago, kind of the bombshell rumor that the iPhone may go to USB-C next year. And then we heard that lots of the accessories that go with the iPhone uh, and other devices, your magic mice, keyboards, trackpads, all that sort of thing, including mm -hmm. the AirPods, would also make the switch because I think at that point, once the iPhone ships with USB-C, it would certainly make sense to bring everything over to that charging standard. So yeah, Woming Chi is reporting that um, these are ready to go into production in the second half of 2022. Now, that could be, it's already May, and that could be as early as July, um, which, you know, like, this could be a, a release in 
certainly not not WWDC time, but, you know, around the next iPhone or in one of the later fall events that we're probably expecting. Or I think the first AirPods Pro came just as a, a press release back in uh, late 2019. So, so you never know. Um, but yeah, we don't have anything on the features apart from the lack of USB-C, which I think makes sense. Once I, I think the next set of AirPods, kind of the next round of AirPods, whatever that mm. will be, the regular and the Pro, it would make sense to make the switch then. I don't think they would do it before they do the iPhone because that would, I think, just be be, be kind of chaos. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to sort of recall what we've heard about the AirPods Pro. I think we're sort of expecting um, like better tracking features, certainly improved audio. I believe Roaming Chi has previously reported that the next AirPods Pro might support lossless audio, which is obviously quite a big deal over current Bluetooth standards, I don't think that's like physically possible. So that would be a pretty intense upgrade in terms of audio quality. Mm -hmm. So, you know, obviously with Apple Music, we have the AirPods Pro and 3. They all support Dolby Atmos and things like that. But we also have the lossless audio and the Apple Masters and all that sort of thing. So that would be a, a pretty, um, pretty big kind of audio step up. And the other one is a Find My charging case which I guess, you know, we have already have Find My AirPods to a degree. So maybe he's sort of referring to something closer to what we have with AirTags, which is, you know, a, a very kind of, you know, close proximity thing for like when your AirPods are in the sofa, not just like which bar did I, I leave them in or something like that. Yeah, so, totally. Yeah, AirPods Pro 2, bit of a mystery, but possibly on the way very, very soon. I think the other thing we've heard multiple times from different sources over 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 time about AirPods 2 is that they're likely, or at least they're, they're possibly getting rid of like the stem design and they're yes. going to be a more in-ear kind of like, a, you know, something like you might see with the Jabra Elites, things like yeah. that. Yeah, well, like uh, the, the Sony, the Sony, or yeah, the like Surface that. Buds or the, or the Sony um, W, they, they have Sony has terrible names, w, <laughs> WXM 1003 yeah. or whatever they call them. Um, they, so, the WD40, who knows? Yeah, um, yeah, I, uh, and I'm, I'd be interested in that. I'm, I'm a big reason why I went with the AirPods 3 when I finally got around to jumping into the AirPods uh, world instead of AirPods Pro is because, like, I'm not a big fan of having tips oh, in yeah. my ears, they just, they just really especially after wearing them for a while, they just really hurt. And I know that like everyone says, well, you got to get phone tips, get phone, phone tips are better if you get like third party phone tips, which I realize is an option out there and all the power to the people who want to do it. Um, but I just haven't really wanted to jump on that train yet. Um, and I just like, I love the AirPods three. They just kind of sit in my ear. I can wear them for literally all day and it doesn't matter. Um, mm. But I would be interested to see if, uh, if it is like a little more secure in the, ear and it's not just the tip going in like obviously there's still going to be a tip that goes into your ear but like if it's not just the tip it might reduce some of the pressure that it puts on because it's like it's more supported in your ear rather than um not because i have found like i've used jabras in the past and i've liked them quite a bit like eventually they will you know make my ears sore if i wear them forever but i feel mm -hmm. like the couple times i've tried airpods pro um you know, in the past, I find that like, it really doesn't take that long for them to to start kind of like wearing on my ears. Whereas the Jabbers I could wear for like a few hours before I really felt any fatigue. So I'd be interested to see yeah. if that would make a big difference for me. I'm not sure. I've never minded the pain, but for me, the air, I would say that I, the, it doesn't, doesn't hurt is what I'm trying to say. Is that I like the pain. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 they don't, they don't hurt me so much, but the, the air pressure for me, when I put stuff in like that it's like sitting in a perpetually landing aeroplane where like my ears yeah. can never quite get yeah. the, the pressure that they, they need to be so i can actually hear what's coming out of the speakers and um, the thing i would say that is really interesting about this i've had the chance to test quite a few different wireless headphones since when airpods first came out they weren't obviously the first wireless earbuds yeah. but they were kind of i think in in the way that Apple often does, you know, kind of the first good viable mainstream option. And certainly if you're kind of vested in the ecosystem, now the market is full of really excellent wireless earbuds, yeah. true wireless earbuds with noise cancelling that do not cost a lot of money. I reviewed Nothing's Ear One Buds and they're not perfect. It's the first product the company has ever made. But for $99, now usually less thanks to, to sales and stuff, they are incredible. And in, in some ways, I prefer them over 
AirPods because they've got really fantastic touch controls. You can get about, I think, seven or eight different functionalities, including uh, a sliding volume sensor, single taps, double taps, triple taps, and in-ear detection, and active noise cancellation with a transparency mode, all for less than, than $100. So whatever Apple is planning to do with AirPods Pro 2, the market is much more challenging, I think, than it was previously. And you're yeah. you're totally right. Ditching the stems is a is another interesting one we've heard. Hmm. Personally, I prefer the stem stuff to not the stems, but I think that's you're you kind of just getting into subjective sort of design yeah. kind of preferences for a lot of people at that yeah, point. Yeah, I, I agree with you. The market has changed quite a bit because o- over that period of time, hmm. I've tested a number of wireless earbuds, and the difference in quality between even three four years ago and now is vast. And we're talking yeah. well under $100 on brands mm-hmm. like Earfun um, and Tribit uh, uh, that you can mm-hmm. get on Amazon. They're they're very inexpensive and they're putting out some very nice earbuds right now. Mm-hmm. So it, it's, you know, Apple's going to be hard pressed to to get people to pay, you know, over $200 for for wireless earbuds now nowadays. Yeah. And. I mean, I I would I would suspect the AirPods Pro two probably won't come with a price decrease. Yeah, <laughs> even though I I agree with you that like it is it is in a they are quite expensive <laughs> compared mm. to the others in the market. Uh, but Apple is you know Apple is definitely relying on on their orchard you know that that ecosystem the Apple Orchard that I'm starting I'm not calling it a wall garden anymore by the way <laughs> it's the Apple Orchard <laughs> I'm making the change right now it's the Apple Orchard. Because it makes more sense, and it's a pun, and I love it. Um, Does but, it still have walls? Or can you get out? Is that what's the? It has. It has. It has a a, a fancy, still has walls. It has a fence a, you no, can see it through. Has a, yeah, it has a gate, a nice fence, and a gate. <laughs> it's, it's it's wood. It's made out of cedar. It's beautiful. <laughs> it smells really uh, nice but, in the rain. Uh, yeah, I mean that's really the only thing Apple has now over these other brands is that yeah. that that easy switching between devices. Because I will say, of all the earbuds that I have. <laughs> that are great. The thing that annoys me the most about them is switching between devices. It's, and even Apple's Beats pain. products, some of them now ship with that. What's the, is it the, stu- is the Beats Studio Buds? They have fast yeah, they have pair it. and switch and are cheaper than, not new, cheaper than AirPods Pro, but like if, if the AirPods Pro were new, they, they would be cheaper. More colors, better for exercise. So yeah, the, the, the competition is, is decidedly more more intense than it was earlier so i will i will say this Uh, sorry karen i'll just quickly jump in. i was just gonna say if if i were going to buy earbuds right now i would buy i would buy the beats fit pro because they they have those little wing tips that fit Mm. nicely in the cartilage of your ear and they come in such cute colors so and they have the, the the switching between devices so i would go for that over the airpods pro yeah I will, I will say in my experience of using, uh, you know, I don't have a pair of AirPods Pro myself, but I've used them fairly often with borrowing them and things and trying them out. And um, same with the AirPods Max. I don't have my own pair because they're r- ludicrously expensive, but I borrowed a friend's <laughs> for a while. Um, I will say one thing that Apple does, uh, and it's not necessarily, you know, it's not maybe the, the biggest feature um, of an ANC headphone, but one thing that Apple I still think is kind of leading the pack on is their transparency mode is really good. Um, mm. Like I, I find out of everything I've tested their transparency mode, um, especially in the AirPods max specifically, but even in the AirPods pro for what they are, I find that the transparency mode is just miles ahead of some of the other stuff. Like even, wow. even, you know, from other, other brands like the Sony, um, if you're comparing the AirPods Max uh, to, you know, the Sony over the ear cans, whichever, once again, weird names, XM 1005 or whatever yeah. it is, uh, the new ones that just came out um, or even the the ones before that were very, very popular. They're very good headphones, but like the transparency mode on, on AirPods Max is just like miles better. Mm. Um, so that is one thing that they do well. Is it the most important thing? I don't know. That's up to you, obviously, but um yeah, that's one thing I've noticed with the Air- with AirPods and in, in my experience and using different headphones is that the transparency mode is like is quite noticeably better um, at what at doing what it does. And especially I find on like some of the cheaper brands too. Like if you are comparing some of the cheaper uh, ANC earbuds to AirPods, their transparency modes I find are quite lacking. Mm. Um, uh, Even some- with Nothing's yeah. buds, I think I remember 
you know, not that I wear buds very often while I'm working, but like a keyboard in transparency mode, for instance, I have a mechanical gaming keyboard. Mm -hmm. Um, it was like amplifying like that. So not like painful levels, but you're like, oh, this is a bit. Yeah, I, I totally agree, Luke. It's something I think the lower end stuff maybe hasn't kind of cracked quite as well. The other thing I think for me, when you you know buy an AirPods Pro, for me, beyond the noise cancelling, the, the most important feature has to be the audio quality. And if the rumors about the lossless audio are true, then all of the competition conversation, I think is basically redundant because I don't think there are any currently wireless earbuds on the market that offer lossless audio i think qualcomm very recently like in march announced that it had cracked lossless audio wirelessly so i think it makes sense to to assume apple has something similar probably in the pipeline so if they do i, I think lossless audio I, I think lossless audio is probably the only thing that's going to get people excited about new airpods yeah. pro um, the only other thing that would get people excited would be a, like a significant price drop. Like it would have to be under yeah. 200. Yeah. And at one, which thing, I don't, I don't see. Lossless, can, yeah. The thing with lossless audio is that it's, um, I, it's really, it's still somewhat niche. I mean, it's, it's more, it's like a, it's an audio file thing. I, the average person on the street doesn't know what lossless audio means. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly can tell the difference if you, if you played them. Yeah. That's true. But on top of that. Sure. But but I mean, if you just ask a random person walking down the street, I, are you excited about lossless audio? They'd be like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And to add to that, Karen, uh, the other thing, too, is if Apple like if Apple comes out and they might be one of the first, I don't know if they will be the first, but if they might be one of the first to include some sort of lossless audio in a, you know, primarily Bluetooth, Apple kind of does its own thing, too. It's not just Bluetooth, but it does use Bluetooth. Um, yeah. That would be pretty spectacular but then the thing is that technology is out there and like we said qualcomm has found a way uh to apparently do it so eventually that just means it's going to come to everything anyways yeah. right like all those other brands like sony and bose and stuff will eventually you know they'll jump on right. their next their next version so and you know if we go by history typically their stuff tends to be a bit cheaper because apple kind of charges a premium for its for its orchard for access to the to the beautiful apple right. orchard so right. um but I, I just i think really, <laughs> that's really the only way to go i mean what what mm. all, what what features are missing you, yeah. you know like, i think what, activity what, tracking what is an interesting one we've seen a lot of patents and some rumors mm. about earbuds that could measure your heart rate or your temperature or oh, track well, your motion so, so like Obviously, that's hard because you also have Apple Watch, which is a, a great way to track kind of most of, of those things anyway. So, but but yeah, certainly AirPods that were more adept, at, you, like I said, the, the temperature, the heart rate, that sort of thing, or, or the motion, you know, if you're, if you're bouncing, having AirPods, AirPods in your ears that could could measure that, I'm, I'm sure there's the, there's there's kind of room to, to spare in there. So that would be another interesting one, especially if you could use them in yeah. tandem with, you know, like an iPhone and a watch for like the ultimate sort of, or even just the watch for like the Trinity or the, or the duo of, of audio, of uh, not audio, of, of fitness tracking. That would be yeah. something I'd be really interested in. That would be a really cool sort of Apple synergy to really encourage people to stay in that orchard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. And thank you for using Orchard. <laughs> I appreciate the help getting it caught on. Uh, before we continue, uh, Karen, why don't you tell us about our second sponsor? Yes, Mint Mobile. After years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by big wireless providers, if we've learned anything, it's that there's always a catch. So when you hear that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless starting at just 15 bucks a month, you might think, what's the catch? But after talking to them and using their service, you'll see it all makes sense. There isn't one. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. They cut out the cost of retail stores and pass those sweet, sweet savings directly to you. For anyone who hates their phone bill, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. Mint Mobile gives you the best rate whether you're buying for one or a family. And at Mint, families start at two lines. All plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. 
Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash more. That's mintmobile.com slash more. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash more. Thank you, Karen. And thank you, Mint Mobile, for sponsoring the show. And thank you, Ryan Reynolds, just because like you own Mint Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> Had to work uh, that in somewhere. Yeah, I mean, I will every time. I know, I know, I know Ryan doesn't even know. <laughs> Until who he we comes are, on but... the show. <laughs> <laughs> Until Ryan Reynolds comes on the iMore show to talk about, I don't know what, I guess Mint Mobile. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. You're welcome anytime, Ryan. Just, yeah, just Ryan, saying, just... if you're listening, we'd yeah. love to have you. Yeah, hit me up, Ryan, and we can make it happen. We can make it no, happen. No, hit me up. <laughs> yeah hit everybody up just 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 make our days a little brighter um interesting rumor about the iphone 14 pro is that it may have a refresh mode for an always on display yeah speaking of a little brighter this is a little dimmer in terms of the uh the iphone 14 <laughs> display we've sort of we got the 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 promotion display with the iphone last year which has enabled 120 hertz, the, the variable refresh rate, um, but it doesn't go all the way down. I believe uh, 10 hertz is the, the the floor for the iPhone 13 Pro, which obviously it's great for saving battery, but it's not quite the always on kind of kind of levels of, of refresh that you would need. But yeah, Ross Young, DSCC, um, a very reliable leaker, quite new on the scene, but has a, an excellent track record of predicting certainly display leaks, changes, upgrades, that sort of thing, um, is expecting the iPhone 14 Pro to have uh, this, a similar refresh uh, refreshing screen to the one it does currently, but with a one hertz display mode that could pave the way for an always on display like we have now in the Apple Watch, which I think is is pretty exciting. Maybe. Yeah. I've, so, can I'm you explain sure. a little bit more about like what what does that mean? A, a, a like a, a one hertz re refresh so rate. So basically, the the refresh rate of the screen is kind of how many. It's I don't know how to really explain it in layman's term. I'm not sure I would would get it myself to to do it. It's basically how many times the kind of the the screen refreshes, which, which sounds redundant, right? So the, the the old iPhone 12 was 60 hertz, and now we mm -hmm. have the the 13. Pro, which is 120 hertz. So basically, right. your, your screen's updating what is on the screen twice as fast as it was with the old phone. So it makes right. So, so you get less stuttering, animations, more smooth. Everything you, looks smooth and, and, yeah. and stuff like that. So then, that. what is the the one? So hertz the, the variable refresh rate at that tones that right down. So right now, your iPhone can change refresh rates. It'll drop, for instance, if you stop scrolling and you're just reading something to save battery. Um, and if it drops all the way down to one hertz, it's basically like when the Apple Watch is in its always on display because it's just showing your watch face and your lock screen. So it doesn't need to refresh as much because, you know, there's nothing animated or, or moving on the screen. So yeah, the one hertz refresh rate, at the very least, it, you know, it could save battery because your phone might drop down to one hertz if you're in your pocket or something like that. Or like, yeah, if you're just reading a, a like an article and you're not scrolling through and stuff like that. But it also could pave the way for an always on display, which I don't know how much of a market that would be. It makes much sense on the on the watch because it's on your wrist. So at any time you might go, oh, what time is it? And you're you're looking at your watch right there, but your phone, you know, it goes into your pocket or your handbag or like the glove compartment of your car or, or whatever. So whilst the display could always be on, I don't know if it would make sense that you would always want to look at it as much as as you might a, a watch. So. Maybe I would. Like a toggle I, I, almost, I could yeah. see use for that. Um, like mm. when I while I'm working, I just have it like sitting on a stand. Yeah. So especially for notifications know. as well, because it can often be frustrating yeah. to like you know your phone's gone off like right when you want to look at it or something, and you have to like raise to wake or tap it or yeah. So right, right. Or like yeah. if you're cooking and you have a recipe on the screen. Hmm. Yeah, I'm curious. I'm curious with what the always on portion would. be be because i know on some other devices in the past it's not like your full fold screen it's like it'll go to the always on when you're not using your phone or whatever but it mostly just shows like a notification bar maybe or like the time it's like it's it's kind of a you know it's not a full experience right so i'm curious if that's the way apple's gonna go too like is it just gonna be kind of a way and i don't think that's bad necessarily like the amount of times 
<laughs> I know it's such a simple thing, but like being able to see the time on my phone without having to tap the screen would I'd probably yeah. use that all the time. That would probably be very yeah, useful. just just like a you could um, have like a giant clock face. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I will I will say like all, always on like the and I mean obviously on a watch it kind of makes sense because a watch is also sort of you know the watch face of your watch is an expression of, of, of you. And, 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 you know, you, there's like a, a style to it. Right. Um, so that it always makes sense. And that's like, I've used, uh, I have an Apple watch series seven. I also have an Apple watch SE and I love my SE a lot, but when I upgraded or when I got the series seven and then I went back to my SE cause you know, doing testing and stuff that I didn't find that I missed like really any of the features necessarily that the series seven had like the additional, you know, health tracking and things like that. But I really did miss that always on display. It just like, it just kind of really made the SE feel a little less like polished. Um, and I, yeah, I think I think that this would be awesome. Um, mm -hmm. And it's interesting, too, because the, the um, you know, Ross also mentions that like the 10 hertz of the 13 pros was technically good enough to do an always on yeah. display. Right. So so who knows if the if the going down to one hertz is is actually for an always on display or if it's just to save battery power. Even yeah, more. absolutely. Cause it, um, it is a big one to 10 is a big kind of multiplier jump down to in terms yeah. of yeah the, the efficiency and the saving battery and stuff like that it's interesting you said about the the se and the the series 7 i think this is maybe one of those features as is often the case with with something apple does where you're like you hear about it and you're like that sounds stupid like i have no <laughs> place for that in my life and then you get hold of it and then yeah. you're like oh my gosh how did i ever live without this for, for me when i got the i was really uncertain about getting the iphone 12 um and sorry the iphone 13 and I was like, oh, should I get the Pro? Should I get the regular? I wonder what the, the crack is with 120 hertz. And I literally picked up a phone in a shop, swiped once across the thing. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this is revolutionary. And and for some people, they they you know they, they don't need that or they, you know, it's it's not worth the trade up for them. But yeah, this is quite possibly because even I think the the always on, like I said, it makes more sense on the watch because if you wore a standard watch, you could always see the display. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's quite possibly it's one of those things where Apple sort of puts it in front of us and all of a sudden we're like, oh my gosh, like how did we ever, how did we survive before always on iPhone screens? Um, yeah, I, I love the always on display on my Apple watch. I use it all the time. Like I just used it a second ago. Um, I just glanced yep. down at my watch to see what time it is. And Are we boring you, um, Carol? I'm sorry. <laughs> I, no, no, not at all. I just, I just I, yeah. it's, it's more of like a habitual thing just because yeah. I like, I, I always like to know what the time is. Yeah. Um, but I would absolutely use it on my phone. I would, I would with, use that all with the time. If nothing well. else, I would just have a picture of my adorable children so I could see them all the time, yeah. all day. Worth remembering as well, always on doesn't mean always bright. So the, the Series 7 has a dark or always on and then you pick it up and it kind of comes to life. So yeah, you're, you're talking about, a, I think probably dimmed but still useful kind of iPhone mm. screen that you can glance at at any time. Probably have to have some good uh, iOS 15, 16 focus integration, because if you're on do not disturb, you probably wouldn't want an always on display with notifications popping up on it or, and stuff like that. So the, the software and the hardware would kind of, I guess, work in, work in tandem to solve that. But at the very least, even without an always on display, this would save, like Luke says, a lot of, battery which is you know you're always looking for ways to improve that and and yeah. there's only so far you can go in making the battery inside the phone bigger without making the phone itself bigger so this right. is you know one of those ways so either way it'd be welcome um yeah it's pretty, pretty I, I anything to to make battery life longer i find even with the, the 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 iphone 13 pro there are some days i do not make it through the day on a single charge which is very sad <laughs> Yeah, and even though I, it's, I also, it's miles uh, ahead of like you know some of the some of the other phones, even even like the the twelve, I find it much better. But yeah, I agree with you. Like if you're really heavily using it one day, like you can definitely still run out the battery before the end of the day. What is um, what is normal for battery? I would love to. We we should we should ask the listeners and stuff like that. So I it is uh, that is a good question actually. Ten it is ten to five Queen's standard time here in the UK. And I only have thirty four percent of my battery left, and I don't think I've am I two thirds of the way through my day. I got up at seven fifteen, half seven thirty ish, which was what ten hours ago, and I mm. probably won't go to bed until like eleven. So like this is definitely yeah. going to need charge. So yeah, that's and I'm you know I, I mostly work 
on a computer and stuff. So I'm not, you know, trawling through the phone that often. So yeah, Karen, I'm the same as you. I, I tend not to get through a, a whole day. Yeah. And it's really bad when I travel because I'm first of all, I'm Mm. taking a lot of pictures. Um, I'm looking at those pictures. I'm getting directions to places. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just Googling like places, restaurants uh, where, you know, getting reviews on restaurants, see where I want to eat. And just between doing all of that, I I almost never make it through a day when I'm traveling. I have to carry a battery or a charger with me. Yeah, totally. Although, I, I will say this: they're like it's definitely dependent on how you use it, right? Yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. There, there are some people I know who, you know, we're because of our jobs and just because of you know how involved we are in tech, we we obviously are all pretty, uh, you know, power users. I guess you might some people yeah. might call us, um, but like you know, my mom has an uh, the new iPhone SE, which you know, battery life is fine, but it's not you know stellar or anything. But like she makes it through a day, no problem on on just that battery, right? And it's it's all about how you use it, so. Um, but yeah, if anything, like, like Steven said, un- unless we're going to be putting, you know, bigger batteries into our phones, which I'm not completely opposed of making phones slightly bigger. That's not, you don't want them to be outrageous, obviously, but, um, I think there's maybe some, some room for a little bit more thickness, perhaps if it, it means a bit more battery life. Um, but, uh, aside from that, then you just have to find ways uh, in the other elements, right? So one being, you know, the display takes a lot of things, the, um, uh, the radios and stuff that there might be some yeah. improvements to make there. Obviously how well your software optimizes it, which is something that Apple, I think has gotten much better at over, over time. Mm-hmm. Their software is very quite good at optimizing as much battery life as it can out of its devices. So, um, in it fact, got sometimes sued at one point and Sue got sued by everybody and they had to pay customers <laughs> a bunch of money. But... <laughs> Right, there was uh, that yeah. as well. The pendulum like, happy medium, I think. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember exactly what iOS version it was, but it was one of it was it was a few years back, and I remember like I had an older phone. I think I was still running like a six or something at the time, and it was starting to get quite slow. I found and and like the battery was dying fairly often. But then when I updated to the new iOS, I was like, this might kill my phone. We'll have to see. Um, it actually made the battery life slightly better because the the newest version of iOS just had more optimization in it. So like there's, there's room sometimes even for, for software and for optimizations on, on the platform to get uh, good enough to actually like make a difference for people, especially, mm-hmm. especially if you're using a slightly older device. So anywhere where they can make headroom, I think anybody would welcome that. I'm curious if the, if the one Hertz is more of a battery play than it is an always on play, but I would welcome, like I said, I honestly, even just to be able to see the time, on my iPhone without having to actually tap it or like look at it or anything, just being able to have it like on my desk or when I'm cooking or whatever, just down wherever it is and just be able to glance at it and see the time. Like that would be insanely useful. And I'd probably use it all the time. Um, even though I have a watch on my wrist. Yes. Yep. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, I, I hope that maybe something comes out of this uh, that for the always on display. Uh, but if it ends up just being a battery play, I'm okay with that too. Uh, before we move on to our last bit of the show, I'd like to tell you about our last sponsor of today, which is our friends at Henson Shaving. Now, if you're still shaving with cartridge razors, you have to stop. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling everybody, cartridge razors are evil. <laughs> they they are overly expensive. They like to say that all their blades make for a smoother experience, uh, but it's just not true. Um, Henson shaving, uh, makes the best blades or not the best blades, the best razor out there because of having safety razor blades, which are only one blade that they have built in an aerospace machine shop (laughs) that makes parts for the international space station. They've designed a razor that has the best shaving angle, 30 degrees. So it's very easy to shave well. You can very easily get a nice stroke across your face or your legs or wherever you're shaving and you won't have it. You'll have no nearly no um, irritation or bumps or have to worry about razor berm again. And the best part is that the blades, the blades that you're used to spending like 10, 15, 20 bucks on at the, at the supermarket blades for safety razors cost about 10 cents, uh, which means you can buy them an insane bulk uh, numbers and able to have them forever. Um, so if you go to henson and see the code I more at checkout, you'll get a hundred blades 
for free. That's about three to four years worth of shaves for about for most people. Make sure you add both the razor and the blades to your cart for the discount to be applied. Once again, go to hensonshaving.com and use the code IMORE at checkout. Thank you very much, Henson Shaving, for sponsoring the iMore Show. The other uh, iPhone 14 rumor we could talk about this week is we already knew, but we've got some fantastic new renders of the iPhone 14 Pro uh, from front page tech. So John Prosser and uh, Ian Zelbo, who I believe is behind the renders, congratulations, because these are fantastic. Um, And this brings to life the purple iPhone 14, which we have heard some rumblings about so i'm really curious to see what you guys kind of just think of these renders as a whole um and yeah this this room and colored i think it looks absolutely fantastic i am a hundred percent in on the purple iphone iphone 14 pro if that becomes a thing i will be first in line to get it. i don't care what shade of purple it is i don't care if it's a light purple or a dark purple or medium purple i want it um, I did poll our readers and a little less than half of our readers are interested in the purple iPhone and the others are either don't care about color or just would not want purple at all. So I guess it's a personal thing, but what do you guys think? I mean, the, the, I mean, they're just renders, the renders look beautiful. And I mean, I, I have the purple, like, uh, iPad air five, um, Mm -hmm. and it looks beautiful. It, It looks really, really nice. And like, it's, it's like a nice kind of like neutral purple. It's a bit, bit of a gray hue to it, but it's like, it's really sharp when the light hits it really nice. It's like this really nice kind of soft sort of like movey kind of purple, I guess. Uh, mm. And uh, I really like it. And I'm always for more color options. I know, you know, some people really don't care, but like give people color options. It's nice. It's nice to have color options. The purple um, was a really big hit. It was a, it was an iPhone 12 in purple, wasn't it? We got kind of midway through the cycle. Yes. That was the first time yes. Apple had put out the, you know, fresh color in the the middle of the the iPhone year, and everyone was like, "Whoa!" No, the, the, no, product red came out mid year. It was like, oh, maybe did it? Eight. Yeah. Back, it's, oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. More recently, yeah, than I guess, but yeah, the the purple was hugely popular, and then mm-hmm. with the iPhone 13, we got the Alpine and the regular green in March, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, I wonder. It's always hard to tell with these rumors and leaks and stuff whether this is a launch color. Or if this is one that might turn up in that kind of midway cycle. Because I wonder if Apple is kind of committed to doing this partway through color refresh just to give the iPhone a bit of juice, put it back in the news and give people who are thinking about, you know, buying an iPhone. Oh, hey, look, there's a new color just come out. Now's a good time to to jump on the bandwagon. So I'll be very, very upset if it's a mid-year <laughs> refresh color. Very, yeah, because I, I am not waiting until mid-year mm-hmm. for the new iPhone. Yeah. I I would say this like I I'd be interested to see what a product red like iPhone Pro nowadays Ooh. would look like because like the, a lot of the product red iPhones we've had in the past that have been like kind of the older style, right? And, yeah, or the SE and, or the yeah. Yeah, and it's it's the the iPhone, you know, with the stainless steel and just the design and the and the glass on the back and everything. I'm just curious what how that would look. I it, like I could feel it it, it kind of goes both ways for me. I feel like it could look really good, but it also could look like too weird. Um, Cause the, you know, even, even some of the other colors, like the, the iPhone pro line has always sort of had like a more muted kind of tone. Whereas product red is kind of by naturally a more vibrant kind of like brighter red. It's yeah. not always the same in tra- typical Apple for uh, uh, fashion, not even their space gray color that's on everything is never the same from product to product. Um, but I would be really curious what an iPhone pro would look like these days in like a red color. I, I, I could see like, like a muted sort of red being kind of really nice. I don't mm. know. Yeah. It's That's hard cool. to I mute th- red though. True. It's and without making it look nature. pink. Right. And there's also yeah. that. Right. Right? It's not without a very muted brown color. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It, it would have to, it would have to veer towards a brown or towards a pink. Yeah. Mm. There was actually, it's funny because there was a rumored, it never happened a, like a bronze iphone like last year i think it was when the 13 yeah, was almost orangey the, yeah which was looked incredible so like, obviously it's not product red but that is one that i would love to see and that's i think a more vibrant color that would work um yeah but the, the purple is a big hit for me um i wouldn't mind like a fifth we always get four pro colors it seems 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, your silver, gold, the graphite, space gray, whatever that's called, and one other. I would love five, six, even colors. Like you can always have more variety and ah. stuff. But yeah, purple's a big hit from me. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'd choose it over blue or green. So if it's if it's purple instead of blue or instead of green, I might end up with a with a graphite or a space gray or black iPhone, whatever it's whatever it's called this year. Yeah. And about that bronze one, I will say like that's an interesting idea. And I mean every color that Apple puts on their phones always looks different, even from as I've said, from device to device. But I will say it was the iPhone eight, I believe. Um, which was the first iPhone that had a glass back, if I remember correctly, for wireless charging. Um, for wireless charging, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it, the the gold color they used that year kind of looked more like a bronzy mm. copper, and I didn't like it. I thought it looked odd. Um, and it didn't really look like the gold ones we had had before. Um, but who knows? It'd be interesting to see what maybe that that would look like on the, on the newer design, mm-hmm. too. And this uh, this render shows off a really cool look at the hole punch front facing camera array, mm-hmm. which when you see it like that, I'm like yes, but like also what like what is the? I think I said this last week or maybe the week before, but what are we getting there that we didn't have? I guess it's kind of cool that the display goes all the way to the edge where the notch would have been. But it still feels. I, I'm sure it's one of those things. again, like the like the always on display. You're looking, you think, "Gosh, how did I ever use a notch on an iPhone?" Like the first day you get it or whatever. But I'm still yeah, I, skeptical-ish about the. It does look smaller than the notch we have now, so maybe mm. that battery percentage could come back. Yep. But other than that, I don't really see the point of it. I don't see how much real estate it really frees up for other things. Yeah, I mean that's what it's always come down to, and I, I think until they until they have the technology to put all of that stuff underneath the display, um, you know, until until that exists reliably and hopefully isn't you know too exorbitantly expensive um, to implement, then I you know we're going to be stuck with some sort of hole punchy, notchy, some sort of cutout there. Um, yeah, I you know the I'm I'm calling it I'm calling it now I'm calling it the exclamation point even though it's technically on its side but I'm calling it the exclamation point if that's what we end up getting I still think it it looks nice like I I've also never been like a notch hater so I it it's never really bothered to me uh, that much so I don't know I, it's weird that like so many people want it to like go away but it seems like well why do you want it to go away and then when you ask them it's like well because it'll just look better and it's like okay i mean that's a personal point i would rather have it go away and it give me something you know what i mean like give give me something useful that i can actually use which for a tiny bit of screen is going to be pretty hard to do so until until they have uh until they have i think that technology to like put it underneath completely uh i don't think i really care what the notch looks like or not notch or cutouts or whatever um, I'm just glad that it does look somewhat distinct from everything out there. It's not like a hole punch just in the middle or, or just off to the side, which we're seeing in so many phones these days. Um, I'm glad it still kind of like has a bit of a unique sort of iPhone look from the, from the, from the front, from the view. I think that's important. I think it's part of like the visual brand of the iPhone. Um, but that's just me. Uh, I don't know. I, and you know, give us a battery percentage back. That's the big one. Just give us give us that back. And if this allows that, then I'm I'm going to be ecstatic. If that, if yeah, that's at least the happen. option for it, because some people don't like to have yeah, it, which true, is fine. But true, like, ha- have it be an option. That's yeah. all. Yeah. Let us know like how much that one hertz display is saving us. That's what we. That's right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. We could right? so we could keep track. That's so funny. Yeah, I I'm curious if if this is a launch color. I am curious what their what they're like if they do a mid season refresh, which I think, I think is kind of par for the course. Now we'll see, maybe mm-hmm. it won't stay for every year, but I think it's kind of, you know, par for the course. So once again, gets, gets the news cycle going about iPhone again. It's like, there's, there's a lot of benefits to it. doesn't really yeah. probably make too much of a difference on the back end for Apple to, to sort of produce it in a new as, color. As per Karen, if the blue is the mid season color, I'll be furious. So <laughs> see, and that's, and that's I what I'm saying. That. Like I, the blue is, you know, they've done blue twice now and they've done green, twice now too um but i uh, i'm curious if like one of those will come 
come back, like probably a slightly newer blue or a slightly newer green. But since they just did green last year, I feel like maybe they would do a blue as a, se- a mid season. Um, but I say, yeah. just, just give us all the colors. Just, just give us colors. Yeah. <laughs> Apple, Apple isn't doing what we want them to do. Apple yeah. does what Apple wants. <laughs> no. and we, well, like I said, try a product, it. try a product red. Just see if it looks good. I want to know. I want to know what it looks like. Maybe um, that'll be the mid season refresh. That would be fun. Yeah, it could be. I mean, that's what it started as, right? Like when they f- they first yeah. did it on the iPhone seven or six or whichever one it was. Um, they when they first did it, that was the first like mid season refresh. So, I am uh, I am curious what it, what it would look like again on on the newer phones with the newer design and um, and the Pro, you know, like with the stainless steel sides and things. I'm I'm interested what it would look like. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, I I just wish that there were more color options in general for most of their devices, but. Maybe we'll get there. We'll see. But the rumors of the MacBook Air that might launch at WWDC says that they might have a ton of funky colors. So they might have like the iMac colors, which would be pretty interesting. Um, but we won't know if that's that's happening. But maybe eventually we'll have the rainbow to our disposal. Uh, yeah, like a like Nike ID, but for Apple, and you can just go in and customize your iPhone, Mac, iPad, whatever, into any color you want. And yeah. Every single mm-hmm. iPad looks different, and is yeah. That would, Actually, yeah. no. Apple would Apple would never go for that. That is a terrible idea. No. I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> Probably yeah. not. And I mean, yeah. I guess you know, with the popularity of of you know skins as well. You know, like D Brand's a popular skin maker, but there's other there's other ones out there. But like, yeah, you can if you really want to change up the look of your phone. There's definitely ways to do it. So at the end of the day, yeah. maybe it's just like. A lot of people put cases on their phones too. So how much do you see the color if you aren't? Using I still a clear see it. Case? I, have a, I have a. I currently have a, a burgundy case on, but you can still see that I have a blue iPhone underneath. There's mm-hmm. still quite a bit of the color of the phone showing. Yeah. So people say, "Oh, I just slap on a case. It doesn't matter what color the phone is. Yeah. It does matter." Yeah, I still see it. And I I typically opt for like clear cases. That's what I typically opt mm-hmm. for uh, for my for everyday carry. This one's not. The back is clear, but there is like a bit of a, a green because it's an iPhone 11, a green iPhone 11. Yeah. Uh, and, and clear it, cases are nice because you can see the Apple logo too. Yeah. But I, the, so you're paying for the Apple logo. You want to see the Apple logo. Yeah, <laughs> ex- exactly. Yeah. So I, I, I've I always liked color options because I'll typically throw a clear case to kind of like show off yeah. the color that I bought. So yeah, um, I use a lot of clear cases too. Yeah. But that's our show for today. Um, thanks to everybody who is listening along live. We really appreciate you. Thanks for all the comments. Thanks for answering our social media polls. Keep, take a look at that. If you ever want to reach out to us about uh, a topic you'd like us to discuss, or you're uh, just interested in things that we're talking about, want to throw your two cents in, definitely hit us up uh, on Twitter at iMore or on Instagram at iMoreGram. Uh, Karen will see all your lovely messages and she'll, we'll definitely uh, get to them if we can. Uh, Thanks for everyone who listens not live. If you're listening to your podcast or choice, we really appreciate you. We wouldn't do the show without all of you listening. So thank you so much. Thanks to Jim Metzendorf, our audio editor, who makes us sound so good every week. And thanks Jim, for two weeks in a row. I remember to record my audio. Here we go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Steven's well, one more week and he's off probation. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding, by the way. He's not on probation. Just in case, just in case that needs to be clear. Um, but thank you, Karen and Stephen, for joining me once again. Uh, and uh, until next week, uh, which is getting, which will only be one week away or three days away from WWDC starting. So mm. uh, we'll have a whole bunch to talk about, I'm sure, kind of wrapping up and uh, and reiterating all the stuff we're hoping to see at WWDC. So definitely tune in next week for that. But until then, we will say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. <laughs>